Okay, we're doing it live. We are live. So, this is my first time using this screen recording setup. Can't guarantee this is going to work very well, but let's see. I'm James, um, and this is my Amazon Cronus T5 Small Time Series Forecasting Tool that I put together in Collab. Um, and yeah, I'm going to take you through how to use it. It's a pretty simple setup, um, and it's quite fun as well. What it will enable you to do is is basically test out Amazon Cronus's um, large language model based forecasting AI model. Um, and yeah, you can test this on a relatively simple data set to kind of see like how it performs in perhaps doing things like forecasting sales performance for you, maybe forecasting budget uh, pacing, whatever you might want to forecast. So yeah, uh, I put this together in a Google Collab um, and I've tried to make it as simple as possible to use and also like implemented like a few things in there, some widgets and um, UX uh, buttons and drop downs and stuff to, to kind of make it as easy as possible to get used to. So first up, there is more information about this model on Hugging Face and there's also a GitHub page for it as well. And basically this is a model that Amazon made available that enables you to do forecasting. Um, and as per the description, Kronos is a family of pre-trained time series forecasting models based on uh, large language model architectures. So this is kind of different from machine learning type forecasting, time series forecasting stuff you might have seen in the past. Um, and yeah, this is a model they put together. They use a lot of training data, which have enabled them to basically build a model which can kind of do some predictive um, work for you. Um, and it works on a zero shot basis as well, which means you can just kind of load it against some data and see how it performs. There's various grades of this available. I'm just using the small model because it's kind of what I got started with and what I managed to get working um, in this Collab notebook. And I've actually seen some quite fun interesting and quite impressive results with it as well so anyway i put some more information in there as well um there's also a link to my linkedin if you want to connect with me and you find this tool useful and yeah i'm going to take you through it it's a little bit of ai generated artwork i, I kind of like anyway but i'm not going to talk about that cool so uh so getting into it um things you're going to need you're going to need a hugging face api key which you know i'm not going to go into that you can figure out how to get that um and for this to work in this notebook, you'll need to save it to your Google Collab Secrets um, section. So this is where it would go in. These are all the AI, uh, sorry, API keys that I've got set up in here. And there you can see I've got my Hugging Face token in there as well. And there's a few instructions as to how you can do that. But basically just follow the instructions, put your API key in there and it should work for you very well. Okay, so to start off, what you're going to need to do is hit this play button here and it's going to install some stuff from GitHub for you as well. Um, I can show what the code output looks like there. Um, it basically does all of this. Um, it takes like a minute or two to run and it does that. So once you've done that, that kind of does the background setting up and stuff. So uh, to run this, what you're going to need is some data, some information to kind of do the predictions on. Um, and I use two files. I've got a sales CSV file and then an actual CSV file. And basically the sales CSV file has got like some Kaggle data, uh, which has got a series of dates in one column and then some sales information in another column as well. And what you can use it, that's like your background information. And then what you're going to do is use that background information to then predict future sales performance. Could be sales, could be clicks, could be impressions, could be uh, budget, spend rate, whatever you want. The the metric doesn't really matter. I've just called it sales in this. So you'll have your first sheet, which is sales, and then you'll have your actual, which is the one which you can then test against to see how well the forecast performed. So um, when you see me do this, I basically use the sales data set, which takes me up to a certain date range. Um, and I actually have the subsequent date range, which I'm seeking to forecast, and what I do is I see how the model forecasts, what results it forecasts, and then I compare that to the actual data that I have as well, which you'll see in there. Anyway, I've tried to make this as simple as possible to help you get set up and going. So what I've done is um, I've actually made available the data sets I use. 
um, into Google Sheets and all you need to do is download those and save those to CSV files. So here you'll see I've got my sales data and that goes up to the 3rd of August 2012. And then I've got the actual data which goes up to the 26th of November, uh, sorry, 26th of October uh, 2012. So it goes, and so basically what the forecast will do is it will fill in this period of time here. Um, and then what we can do is compare how the forecast looks um, versus the actual data that was outputted. I probably didn't explain that very well, but anyway. So the first thing we're going to do is upload our CSV file from our computer. So we just hit this play button here uh, and we're going to upload our CSV file. And the first one we're going to upload is our sales data. So let's open that. And here we see it's uploaded. Next, we are going to select that file. This is the one that we want to run the forecast on. So we've loaded that and we can see here from the output that that data is loaded. Now what we're going to do is confirm the column names. And I kind of built this in because I figured sometimes people might be uploading CSV files with different column names and things. And basically what you want is you want to select your date column and then you want to select your sales column. Again, this could be any metric that you want, but effectively, say for example, you're forecasting clicks to a website. You could select your column called clicks and that would just map to this sales column that got predefined and what this basically does is it ensures that the the model can run correctly so i select my columns and it says column selected and then we're good to good to go so generate forecast and csv file okay so what we're going to do here is i'll run this piece of code here and what this does is i've built in some flexibility so that um it enables us to run forecasts based on like different ranges that we might want to forecast out to. So for example, say you just wanted a forecast that looks at the next seven days. So you wanted to see like how many sales am I gonna make in the next week. You would choose that by selecting this drop down here. And I've, I've basically made it from one to 20. So if we wanted to look at like the next seven days, we'd select 11. Um, or equally, if you wanted to look at, you know, the next 20 days, you would select 20, what have you. Uh, so for this purpose, uh, I'm looking at forecasting out 12 points in time. So I'm going to choose my forecast length to be 12. So that's going to be 12 points it's going to forecast for. And then what I've got here is the data I'm actually looking at is running forecasts for each week. So it's running 12 weeks of forecasts. And so my interval period is seven days between each data point. But again, if you wanted to forecast out for the next seven days of performance, like for next week, you would just drop this down to one. And that will enable you to, so let's say, so for example, if we want to run like next week's forecast, we would have seven days as our forecast length and the interval between those days being one day. But for the purpose of this, we're going to do 12 and seven. So we're looking at 12 weeks worth of forecasting. As you can see, each time I update those, um, it, it updates that relative to what, what we're gonna forecast. So uh, now we run the forecast and it's gonna do its thing. And this takes like a little bit of time to run, but we'll just let it let it get busy. Do, 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 do. Uh, oh, and here you can see also what I've also built in is an automatic download of the sales forecast CSV file that's produced as well. So you can see the data and you've got all the numbers for the forecast. And then we have this piece of code here, which generates our forecast chart. And here we can see here, here's our chart that's been predicted. And now this is basically just showing us based on the historical performance, these blue lines, what is the data forecasting for the next 12 weeks? And here we can see we've got three lines. We've got a low forecast, a medium forecast, and then a high forecast as well. And generally what I see like from the performance of these models is that the medium forecast is, is the most accurate. Um, and if you didn't have a data set to compare this to, to compare the actual accuracy of this output, you could just take this and you could say to yourself, all right, based on this analysis or, or based on this forecast, this is what I might, hit in the coming week and you could you could probably use that 
as a basis to make some assumptions. I'm not saying you necessarily do, but you could do. Now we come to the interesting part, which is where we actually get to compare the performance of the Cronus models forecast versus the actual data. So I've also built this in. So what we're going to do now is um, we're going to upload our actual data. So for that same period, so we're going to open that up, load it, and here we can see that's loaded in. Uh, we get just like we did before. We're going to select our column names. So that's the actual CSV file that we want to do. So we're going to load that file, and then we're going to choose our date and our sales column, and we've selected those columns, and that's all in there. Cool. Now we're going to see how it performed, how the trend line performs. Oh, sorry. Select columns. Okay, there I've done. I've selected those columns in, and let's run that again. Okay, cool. And here we go. Here we can see we've we've outputted our chart, which shows our performance versus uh, the so the forecast versus the actual performance for that date range. And here we can see here if I zoom in, this is quite a neat neat bit of it. We can actually see that that median, the green line, actually did a pretty good job of forecasting against the actual data, the this black line here as well. What I've also built into this is um, a view which tells us kind of the degree of accuracy that we have for each of those uh, forecasts. So we can see the low variance was about 4.6% out in accuracy. The high variance was about 7% out and the median was within 0.5% accuracy for that, that period of time. So actually, based on this test data set, we can see that the Amazon Kronos model actually performed pretty nicely, giving, the, giving us that 0.5% uh, accuracy. Uh, so it's within half a percent accurate to to the, the real data. Um, and then, yeah, the other nice thing about this is that all of the data that is produced by these forecasts is available uh, in the Google um, Files section, so you can download all of these and you can check them through and you can see the actual results as well. Um, I would say like all of this, this is like a fun little experimental project. Um, I've tested it against a few Kaggle data sets and I've been generally pretty impressed with those outputs. I've seen like ranging uh, from 94% to 99% accuracy on forecasts of test data sets that I've used it with as well. Um, so yeah, um, personally, I find these a large language model based time series models like super exciting. As someone who's had to do like a lot of forecasting stuff um, in in my work in the past, um, I think this is super cool. Um, there's potentially a lot of benefits from using these, potentially big time savers. There are some caveats, of course. You can't, at least the way... I've built this so far, you can't really do forecasts against different variables or different dynamics. Um, but what it can do is potentially give you some indication of what your baseline performance might be. Um, say you're a small business, you want to know what your sales are going to be for the coming month. You could possibly use something like this to get a baseline to then understand, okay, um, you know, what if we were to do some additional promotions? Um, or additional discounts or things like that to our, to our customers, you'd have that baseline and then you could try to make some assumptions around like how much um, improved performance you might see against that baseline. But again, take all of this stuff, um, take it all uh, take it all with a pinch of salt. You know, these are still relatively new, these time series models, um, but so far from what I've seen, I've been pretty impressed. So yeah, that's it. Um, I'm going to share a link to this workbook. Hopefully you can see it's super easy to get started. And um, yeah, um, if you want, please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, that's me. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, I hope you find it useful. All right. Thanks.